Have you ever heard about the mysterious monoliths? If you're normal, probably not, unless you're a huge sci-fi film fan and just thought about 2001 A Space Odyssey when I mentioned the word monolith. Yeah, that big black rectangular thing the ape man found is a monolith. But like I said, that's sci-fi. But now they are becoming sci non fi that is, science non-fiction, meaning real. These strange metal structures have been suddenly popping up all over the world the last few years, leaving people scratching their heads in confusion like Ape Man in 2001 A Space Odyssey. From the deserts of Utah to the shores of Romania, these monoliths seem to appear out of nowhere, sparking curiosity and speculation among scientists conspiracy theorists, and people like you and me who just like to learn about weird and unexplainable stuff. First things first, what exactly is a monolith? Well, a monolith, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, is a large, single, upright block of stone or metal, usually with a simple geometric shape. Think of it like a scale model of a skyscraper without windows. Monoliths, despite what we've been led to believe, have been around for centuries and have been used by ancient civilizations for various purposes, such as religious rituals, monuments, markers, and inspiring early man to pick up bones and start clubbing their friends. But what has been happening recently is certainly out of the ordinary. The mystery of the modern monoliths began in November 2020 when a helicopter crew in Utah stumbled upon a shiny metal monolith while counting sheep. Most of us count sheep in bed when we can't get to sleep. These guys do it while in a helicopter, which I would think would not be the safest thing to do since counting sheep is supposed to make you sleepy anyway. This discovery quickly captured the world's attention, and before long, similar monoliths started appearing in other parts of the world, including California, which is no surprise, they're all kind of weird there anyway, Romania, and even as far as the Isle of Wight in England. So. What the heck are these things? People have been coming up with all sorts of theories, of course. We humans do love to speculate. Some believe they are the work of extraterrestrial beings, left behind as a form of communication. These would be the same folks who think 2001 A Space Odyssey is a documentary. Others think they might be the work of pranksters, probably fans of 2001 A Space Odyssey. And then there are those who speculate that it's all part of a marketing stunt or social experiment. Marketing what? We don't know. Which kind of defeats the purpose of creating a marketing campaign. Maybe a giant Jenga game is coming soon to a Toys R Us near you. That'd be cool. Despite the wild theories, though, the truth continues to elude us. Authorities have removed some of the structures. Party poopers. I'm guessing the military so we couldn't get close to the monoliths and do our own investigations or start worshipping the aliens of Nibiru. Other monoliths vanished on their own without a trace just as quickly as they appeared. I'm guessing aliens so we couldn't get close to the monoliths and keep ruining the giant game of falling dominoes they were planning. We can be so rude. In a few cases, individuals have come forward claiming responsibility for creating or installing the monoliths but they couldn't possibly be responsible for all of these structures appearing, unless they truly are lizard people, and nobody seems to understand what their motives or intentions might be anyway. Maybe they're like the two old guys who admitted to making so many crop circles in the UK a few years ago. They're just artists who are really good at geometry who've inspired others like them to do the same in copycat fashion. Honestly, that sounds like the most feasible explanation to me. But then I was never very good at math, or art, or conspiratorial thinking, so what do I know? Whether these monoliths are the work of aliens, artists, or giant board game manufacturers, one thing is for certain. They have captured the world's attention and will likely continue to puzzle us for years to come, especially if they keep appearing without the greys dropping off an instruction manual on how to use them. Personally, I kind of like the idea of not knowing. Like learning the secret to a magic trick, it ruins the fun of the illusion. I like a world full of surprises, wonder, and endless possibilities and mysteries. And the possibility that, right under our noses, the Nephilim are planning a monster game of Jenga. Yeah.